Postcoital bleeding is the medical term for bleeding after sex and is not related to your period. Sometimes the causes can be benign, but bleeding after sex can also be a symptom of something more serious, like an infection or cancer. So if you are bleeding after or during intercourse, see your medical provider for an evaluation. But in this video, I'm going to talk about what the possible causes are, what tests your medical provider might do, and how they will treat it. But hey, if this is your first time to Diana in the Pink, I'm Diana, I'm a physician assistant, and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. Hey, hit the subscribe button. I mean, if you want to, or not, but I'd really like it if you do though, and even better, give me a comment below. I actually read every single one of them. So say hi, tell me what other video topics that you'd like to see, or whatever. But let's not waste any more time on that. Let's talk about post coital bleeding. Let's start with the causes, and I'm going to try to be thorough here, but I can't really talk about every single possible cause, but these are by far the most likely things that could cause bleeding with sex. So first off, benign causes. So you can actually have an infection, sexually transmitted infections or STIs like gonorrhea, chlamydia, or trichomonas can cause a cervicitis or inflammation of the cervix that make the tissue more friable, which means it's more likely to bleed with sex. If the STI moves further up into the genital tract, you can develop something called pelvic inflammatory disease or endometriitis, both of which can also cause bleeding after sex. Another cause could be a cervical polyp. Cervical polyps are small, painless growths caused when cells multiply abnormally. These tend to bleed more easily than your regular cervical tissue, so when they are disturbed during intercourse, they can bleed. Rarely, these can develop into cancer, and so they're usually removed as soon as they're discovered at your medical provider's office. It's a very simple, and for the most part, painless procedure. Hormonal birth control can cause bleeding after sex. Birth control like the pill, the injection, an IUD, or implants can all affect the lining of your cervix and make it extra sensitive, especially when you first start on them. They can also change the timing of your period so that you might start bleeding at an unexpected time, like, I don't know, during intercourse. <laughs> Another common cause is something called cervical ectropion, which is when the cervical cells grow outside your cervix, where they can be disturbed during sex and cause bleeding. Vaginal thrush is a common yeast infection that it can occasionally cause bleeding, and then intercourse itself might actually cause bleeding as well. If vaginal penetration occurs before you were aroused enough to lubricate yourself, this can cause tears in the vaginal tissue that can bleed. Also, if your estrogen hormone levels are low, which happens when you're like breastfeeding or when you go through menopause, your vaginal tissue can become thinner and then bleed more easily with intercourse. Pregnancy is another reason, due to the increased blood flow to the cervix, which will make it bleed a little bit more after intercourse. Finally, and by far a less common cause, is cancer. But this is less than 5% of patients who have bleeding with sex. Out of those, the majority is cervical cancer, but vulvar and vaginal and uterine cancer can also cause it. Now in the US, cervical cancer is rare because of pap test screenings. We usually can catch early changes in the cervix long before it becomes cervical cancer. But in places where pap tests are not as readily available, cer cervical cancer can be more likely, but still overall a less common cause for bleeding after sex. Okay, so let's now talk about what might happen when you make an appointment with your medical provider. First, try not to stress. I know you might be worrying that it could be cancer, but honestly, the likelihood that just the symptoms of bleeding after sex is actually caused from cancer is quite low. And in fact, most of the time, even after testing, there isn't even a discernible cause. So as long as they've done a thorough examination and appropriate testing, after that, you really don't need to do anything further. So, at the office, your GP will need to ask you some personal questions about your sexual activity and your partner. Don't be embarrassed by them. They are just gathering a history on you to guide their evaluation. They might ask you things like, what is the approximate amount of bleeding? So like, are you having just spotting? Or are you having like a full period? They might ask if postcoital bleeding occurs with every episode of vaginal sexual activity or only sometimes. And if it doesn't occur, 
all the time? Does it seem to occur with specific activities or with specific partners? They'll ask if the bleeding is associated with pain or vaginal dryness or vaginal discharge. And the more information that you can give them, the easier it will be for them to find out what's going on. Other important questions are what your birth control is, if you're on any medications, and when you've had your last pap smear. After they've taken your history, they're most likely gonna to wanna to run some tests. They might check a urine test to check for pregnancy or maybe an infection. They might collect a vaginal swab to check a culture for gonorrhea, chlamydia, and trichomonas. And they will most likely do a speculum examination to actually look for the cause of bleeding in your vagina or your cervix. And they may choose to do a pap test, even if you are up to date on your pap test. They might just do another one. Now, based on your symptoms, your history, and your exam, your GP might also want to check a pelvic ultrasound, or if they see anything on your cervix, they might want to biopsy that. Now, the treatment is going to be based entirely on what is causing the bleeding. So if you have an STI, they will want to treat the STI, and then the bleeding should go away. If you have a polyp, they're going to remove the polyp. And if you have thin vaginal tissue due to low estrogen, they might prescribe vaginal estrogen cream. If the bleeding is due to a new form of birth control, sometimes it just takes a conversation about normal variation of bleeding patterns, or you can just change your birth control method if you want. If they find that your cervix just bleeds more easily because of cervical ectropion, like I mentioned before, sometimes just knowing that that's what it is will help you to feel better about it. But it can be cauterized or frozen to stop the bleeding but there are some risks associated with that. So talk to your provider about those risks to decide if that's something that you want to do. For the rare cases of cancer, your GP is gonna guide you to all the right doctors and the specialists to get everything addressed and to get you on all the right treatments. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. Again, comment down below. I really enjoy reading your comments. I like to know what videos you'd like me to do next. And again, subscribe. If you know somebody that you think this is gonna help them, share this video with them. Did I already say subscribe? Now, if after watching this video, you're thinking, gosh, you know, I'm actually not sure if what I'm experiencing after intercourse is bleeding, or maybe it's just vaginal discharge that looks different. Um, I've actually done a video all about vaginal discharge, their colors, and what can cause it. It's a great video. Check it out right here. I'm gonna link to it right here. Click on that, and I'll see you over there. Okay. This is what a creamy white discharge looks like. Now this is just sour cream, but a creamy white discharge looks very similar to this. But sometimes creamy yellow discharge is pretty common as well.